Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 392, the almost ready to get to GAFCON edition. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm David Pelegi from Jerusalem. Once again, Skype has allowed me to speak with uh, Father David Poligli. Uh, you are the priest at Christ Church Jerusalem, um, a great historic church, one of my favorite churches because you can actually go to the guest house and stay there, um, which I've done, I think, two times now. It's, it's uh, a lot of fun. I want to get you on camera and talk a little bit about the upcoming uh, GAFCON conference in Jerusalem. It starts uh, the week of uh, June 15th through the 24th because in all things the Middle East, it's not always stable over there. Uh, and nor is it in Africa. If people remember right before uh, the Nairobi GAFCON, there was a terrorist bombing at the Westgate uh, Mall. Uh, many people were killed. And this happened right before the uh, leaders met at uh, Nairobi to see if they were going to go through with it or not. And they decided to, and it all turned out well. But that's just part of the culture and terrorism in 2017 and 2018. And... Uh, if people are watching this after 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, they just discovered that Trump decided no longer to be part of the Iranian nuclear deal. Uh, he's pulled out. Europe has not decided to pull out. Um, and so there's going to be a lot of tension in Israel and Jerusalem, uh, a lot because of what Trump has done, a lot because of what Iran is doing, and the continued conflict with Syria. So I have David on to talk about all these things. Uh, first, David, how are you doing? Uh, reasonably well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Reasonably well. I'm going to adjust your volume for our listeners because uh, I couldn't hear them. Now they can hear you. <laughs> um, having GAFCON in Jerusalem is um, it's great. This is the 10-year anniversary of GAFCON. Uh, I was there for the first one. It was a lot of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. There were even tensions at that time uh, in Jerusalem uh, with the Palestinians. Uh -huh. um, right after we left, there was a terrorist attack with a uh, person in a bulldozer attacking uh, cars in the street. Um, he was shot and killed by police. That is the dynamic in the world with which we live in right now. That is the dynamic. Uh, of, of that is part of the Middle East. That's part of uh, what it means to come to Jerusalem. Uh, there is a certain uh, uh, there is a certain risk. Yes, you certainly have uh, been part of the email chains and the preparations. Um, what should people be concerned about now when they come to uh, Jerusalem uh, for Gafcon? Well, I, here's my. Uh, advice, uh, Kevin. Uh, first, uh, things may get uh, a bit messy in the mm -hmm. Middle East. Uh, in fact, things may get a little hairy uh, before before GAFCON in June. We have the uh, American Embassy being officially moved next week. Um, there's a celebration of Jerusalem Day. Uh, it's a holiday in which uh, Israel celebrates the uh, capture of the old city in East Jerusalem uh, from uh, Jordan. Uh, all of these things might uh, bring some uh, tension with uh, the Palestinians, uh, either in the West Bank uh, or in Gaza. But of course, then there's the uh, tense situation uh, in the north, uh, in Syria, between uh, Iran uh, and Israel. And uh, that might get a, a little serious between now and GAFCON. So I'm just advising folks not to panic. Uh, don't cancel. Um, don't be worried, especially at this stage, and uh, and in no way be afraid. Uh, virtually, unless the, our, our State Department or or the Foreign Office or uh, tell people directly not to come to Israel. Uh, I don't think we should be bamboozled, or we should be afraid. And those intending on coming to Gafcon. Uh, should be firm and resolved to, to come. Now, in America, the only visions we get from Israel are the conflict on the border where mm -hmm. there's uh, on the Palestinians on one side, uh, the Israel's on the other side with the little drones looking over, um, there's uh, fires being started. There is always conflict, but it's becoming more and more visual. Uh, yes, there's always been conflict, but thanks to 
uh, social media, of course, it's, it has become, uh, uh, we know about it uh, a lot more. And at the same time, we know less about it because uh, social media isn't uh, very good in explaining something nuanced. Uh, or it, it isn't very good at uh, telling you, well, this might be happening near Gaza, but if you're coming to Gafcon, for example, you'll be in Jerusalem and you'll be a world away uh, from uh, that kind of trouble. So, yeah, so we, we see a lot more, Kevin, but we know a lot less, I think, thanks to social media. I, I, I agree. Well, all we have here 24-7 uh, with CNN, MSNBC, and all the networks is just Trump news. Uh, uh -huh. it, it was through Trump news that I learned that there's going to be a new square in Jerusalem called the Trump Square. Uh, yeah. People uh, in Israel, whether they're on the left or the right, uh, do applaud uh, our president uh, for moving the embassy, uh, and that is because there's this sense in Israel that uh, Jerusalem is the capital of the state of Israel, and it certainly should be up to every nation uh, in the world to choose its capital. And I think a lot of people in Israel feel uh, delegitimized uh, by the fact that the world refuses to recognize uh, Israel, uh, sorry, recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a, a nice uh, a psychological victory in all of this, whether it means much politically or uh, whether it's going to uh, affect in, in a negative or positive way the uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict, you know, it's, it remains to be seen. But I, I think it's basically symbolic. Now, Israel just celebrated its 70th birthday, um, yet there's still tensions going on with uh, Iran, Syria, uh -huh. Iraq, uh, the whole kind of the tinderbox that is the Middle East. Uh, and over here, mm -hmm. we've kind of lost the generation that knew about Auschwitz. We've lost right. the generation that uh, helped uh, you know, break that uh, area free, freed uh, Europe, that, that greatest generation's gone now. And I think the memory that they uh, had with them is gone because uh, we're doing polls now. And this is the, one of the more interesting ones. Four in 10 German uh, uh, children, students uh, under 18, never heard of Auschwitz, mm -hmm. uh, the story behind it. Two thirds of US students in the US don't know about Auschwitz. Um, Poland now is denying uh, complicity uh, with the Germans uh, back in the 1940s. Uh, you know, that's a that's a comp that's a complicated subject. But yes, that that is uh, mm -hmm. what you say is uh, is true. That so themselves as uh, as only only as angels. Uh, and so yes. Uh, how do we keep the the, the message alive? Well, let me tell you um, first uh, why we need to keep it alive. Uh, because I think some people think it's, first uh, of all, it's only a Jewish issue. It concerns the Jewish people. And, and I've heard many a person say, uh, Kevin, you know, the Jews should stop living in the past. They should give it up. They should somehow look to the future and, and stop thinking about all these uh, traumas and uh, horrible sufferings that's happened to them. But uh, maybe I can say on that score, that uh, this idea of uh, memory uh, is actually something deep in the Jewish DNA and it was put there by God himself. Uh, if you go through the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, maybe the most often repeated command uh, in the Hebrew scriptures that God gives to his people is remember, remember, remember. Uh, history uh, is instructive. And we should, while it may never exactly repeat itself, uh, we should learn from that. Now, that's not something we do very well in the United States, certainly in our culture, uh, and in many other places in the world, we want to look to the future and somehow uh, forget, uh, forget the past. But the other issue that's is really important, and this is what we need to explain to people, as to what, is because a Holocaust uh, is an unprecedented, I won't say unique, it's an unprecedented event uh, in all of human history, and we need to be vigilant and learn from the Holocaust, learn from what the Jewish people suffered, and hopefully prevent uh, something like this from uh, from happening again. Well, it has happened in places like Rwanda, 
and uh, similarly in uh, Cambodia, and that's because we haven't internalized the lessons of the Holocaust. And uh, so again, while it's something that happened uniquely uh, uh, to the Jewish people, it is has it has universal uh, universal implications. And uh, as a way of stopping genocide or stopping mass murder, we need to to learn some lessons from from the Holocaust. You know that probably more people have died since 1900 uh, in uh, one form of genocide, political, religious. Uh, murder than uh, than any other than perhaps uh, through any other uh, any other way. Well, yeah, so they hit the statistics. Uh, uh, you know, 150 million people. Sure. Some say 125 million people have been murdered by religious groups or or political parties or or different countries since uh, since the beginning of the 20th century. Yeah. So uh, it. it Probably more likely, people are more likely to die from genocide than they might be from from a heart attack, for example. Mm -hmm. And um, this is look, this is a uh, this is a serious serious problem. Uh, it's a serious spiritual problem. Uh, isn't it interesting that the first after the uh, Adam and Eve are expelled from the garden, the first sin is a, is murder. Um, and uh, we could probably talk about that for. Uh, you know, for for quite a long time. That's why the Iran, uh, the uh, Israel's conflict with Iran is uh, so serious. Um, you know, the Second World War started because Hitler had these uh, really ludicrous anti-Semitic ideas, and uh, one of these, the major uh, ideas that he had was that communism was a Jewish plot, and that the Soviet Union was run by Jews. In fact, he thought the Slavs right. could be stupid, and they, they couldn't run their own country, so it was the Jews that were, that were uh, propping up the Soviet Union. And of course, Hitler wanted an empire. He wanted living space. He wanted oil. He wanted wheat <coughs> from the Ukraine. And in order to get that, he had to knock out the Soviet Union. Uh, and in order to knock out the Soviet Union, he reckoned he had to murder the Jews. Uh, so that would cause the state... Uh, the Soviet state uh, to collapse, and he went to war. He went to war in Poland in 1939 as a way to get to the Soviet Union, and in the end, his crackpot, uh, dangerous crackpot anti-Semitic ideas cost the lives of 45, perhaps 45 million people in Europe, and it's the same with Iran. Iran's got some uh, nutty, no, not nutty, dangerous, sick uh, anti-Semitic obsessions, uh, since 1979, since the uh, the, the Ayatollahs came to power, uh, virtually every week they have threatened to wipe out Israel. They have threatened to burn Tel Aviv. They have called Jews, uh, you know, a, a cancer, an epidemic, uh, a disease. <coughs> Jews are filthy. Uh, Jews need to to be punished. Israel needs to be totally destroyed, virtually weekly. These are not two, two guys in a coffee house talking about, uh, talking, to, you know, having a little racist chat. These are the leaders of a nation, legitimacy to, uh, to this genocidal talk. And by the way, threatening genocide is against international law. You don't have to do it. You're in violation of international law. If you threat destroy another people or uh, another state, and so this. Uh, genocidal talk and what Iran, uh, Iran's nuclear activity and Iran's uh, positioning itself to um, uh, encircle Israel and Syria and Lebanon has people in this country extremely, extremely worried and extremely concerned. And sooner or later, if something God doesn't intervene in some way, or there's not some uh, diplomacy or some move by the Russians, there will be a clash. In Israel and Iran uh, in Syria and that clash might be regional might spread to become a regional war and it who knows it should it even can become an international war and uh, my appeal to people not just folks coming to GAFCON but to, I think to Christians everywhere is uh, that we should uh, resort to very intentional uh, very serious 
very strategic prayer and fasting. Uh, there was an old book, Kevin, that I read when I was a kid, young Christian, which, uh, you know, folks have it, they should dust it off and read it again. It was written by Derek Prince, and uh, it was called Shaping History Through Prayer and Fasting. And uh, I recommend that to, uh, to, uh, to the folks who are organizing AFCON as much as to, uh, to all your viewers who are really concerned about the Middle East and, and the, way the, world, the way the world is going at the moment. It has been reshaped through prayer and fasting. I never it, in my life thought that Saudi Arabia and Israel would be on a talking basis. Yeah. You know, so well. I, I woke up one day and I, I, they're going to have talks. They're going to meet. They're going to, you know, talk about the region. They're going to talk about the problem that is Syria and Iran. Um, wow. Yeah. You know, it's not just praying against war. I you know people would pray for reconciliation between yeah. Israel and the Palestinians, uh, uh, as well as, you know, for uh, the advancement of the gospel in this part of the world. This, uh, as we know firsthand, and we have evidence uh, here at Christ Church that huge number of Muslims are open to um, to the work to the message of Jesus and uh, they're becoming uh, in large numbers becoming Christians uh, is something that's unprecedented in all of Islamic history and uh, you know God is uh, you see these things on CNN or or even Fox News but uh, what you don't see really very well is what God is doing behind the scenes and the kingdom of heaven is growing and expanding uh, in the lives of uh, many people, and, and uh, you know Jesus is being uh, worshipped, and uh, and uh, he, you know, he's on through his Holy Spirit. He is he is certainly uh, on the move. So this is something that we can add to we can add to our prayers. Uh, the, the Middle East is at a crossroads. It's never before in its history. Have so many people, uh, Jews and Arabs and others, nominal Christians, really been open to uh, uh, open to the gospel. That's correct. And uh, uh, you know, this is this could be a change, uh, you know, in uh, in the Middle East. So we shouldn't think it's all hopeless. Uh, that somehow this this is a black hole that will never get better uh, or never change. Uh, we need to ask for the gift of faith and, and keep praying. Well, we need to reiterate for people who were not paying attention in the first three or four minutes, it's absolutely safe to go to GAFCON uh, unless you hear different from the State, De the State Department. Don't write me and ask me if you should cancel because <laughs> I'm, I'm already getting letters and people should not cancel even if things look a little rough and a little rugged. A lot of work is going into GAFCON. Uh, there's a, a lot of... Uh, sweat and toil and uh it sounds looks appears like it's going to be a, a wonderful time of of uh, of fellowship and uh i'm sure there's some other business that will uh will, will get done and uh this is a, i think a great way to 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 make an important uh statement uh surely about the uh, about the future where we want uh, our church to go uh so don't be afraid. Don't cancel um, unless ultimately our government or some other government says under no circumstances uh, should you travel to. Well, now Jerusalem. you're talking about Cancun. That's what we're getting the message. Don't that's go to a, Cancun. This is safer than Cancun. That's how. how, how that's a, that's a safer, this is safer than Cancun. We have very little violent crime or, mm -hmm. or uh, you know, a rape or something, for mm -hmm. example. Uh, in this part of the world. So Jerusalem is a, very, it's a city of a million people. Uh, whether you're on the Jewish side or the Arab side, it's, it's pretty safe. It's unlike any major North American or European uh, European city. It's just that sometimes we, we have, unfortunately, we have a, this outbreak of, uh, of, of violence and uh, with all these uh, events occurring uh, in the middle of May here, we should all be vigilant and prayerful uh, and like I said virtually under no circumstances should you cancel and even if the government says don't come which you should still come anyway all those Ugandans in Nigeria yeah. probably, they won't so 
So if I were going to go, is there a good tour company to 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 that I could uh, hit up with? Yeah, there's is there a good tour company. Well, we have you. Thank you, Kevin. I know. Uh, I I don't think you have shares in the ministry, but uh, uh, but uh, there is. Uh, uh, Christchurch here in Jerusalem, we have a tour ministry mm -hmm. uh, in which all the prophets uh, go into uh, are plowed back into God's work. Uh, and yes, so we are running tours before GAFCON uh, and after GAFCON. That's available on the website Christchurch Jerusalem or Shorish uh, study tours. And uh, some of those tours, I think there's one led by Neil Labar, Bishop Neil Labar, that's already full. Uh, and I think Foley, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Archbishop Foley Beach is coming, uh, maybe coming, oh, he just came, sorry. Um, but, uh, and we have some tours, we have some tours after GAFCON, uh, after GAFCON as well. All right, well, so, I'll put the link in the show notes. So if you guys uh, are interested, even if you're not going to GAFCON, uh, I've done a, a, a sh been a part of a, a tour that uh, was hosted by David Blakely, uh, uh, the Shores Tours. Awesome. It, it, absolutely, you know, mind-boggling, life-changing. Uh, awesome. Thank, thank you. We, I, I appreciate, we appreciate the plug. We, we do mostly uh, Anglican tours for uh, evangelical Anglicans, charismatic Anglicans, uh, uh, and others. And uh, we uh, love uh, introducing uh, people to, to Jesus, especially to the Jewish Jesus, mm -hmm. not so that we can become Jewish, Kevin, but so that ultimately we can become uh, better and more faithful disciples. That's our goal. That's the goal of, uh, of, of Shorish Tours. So Awesome. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm David Pelegi. And you've been watching Anglican Unscripted, episode 392.